Okay. Okay, so hello everyone. Welcome to Entrepreneurs International Network. My name is Keisha Carter, and I am the organizer of EIN. And I'm super excited for having a great speaker for today, Dr. Duman Owen. So Duman will discuss get clients in a record time with LinkedIn. But before Duman comes to our virtual stage to discuss her topic, we want to talk about what EIN is and how you can get the most out of everything that EIN offers. So first and foremost, Entrepreneurs International Network. Um, if uh, people here are not yet familiar, it's an organization that helps entrepreneurs find free or inexpensive education that can help them to network and grow their entire business. So in every single event, we'll have education, networking session during our Q&As, and gratitude circle where you can find your potential joint venture partners and clients. So we also have an app called Entrepreneurs International Network. And to download them on your mobile phones, just head into Google Play or App Store and find Entrepreneurs, I-N-T-L dot network to get access to a lot of other pieces of information. So if you go to our official website, eintalks.com, you'll be able to see the recording of all the past events that we've had. Plus, you will be able to take a peek on our upcoming events and register there. So I highly recommend that you download our app and visit our website so you can get access to all the information that I just shared. So... <clears throat> Uh, as I've discussed earlier um, of the event, um, this will run for 90 minutes and our speaker will give her talk 45 minutes. And then after that, we'll have a 15 minute question and answer portion by the audience. And lastly, we'll give another 15 minutes for our gratitude circle. That is the time where our audience can share their takeaways and their gratitude to our speaker. And at 530, we'll be wrapping up and close the event. And with that, let's go to our beautiful speaker today, Dr. Duman Owen. She is a serial entrepreneur, master personal brand and digital brand strategist, and international best-selling author. She is known for building personal brands that help entrepreneurs attract clients that are 100% right fit using LinkedIn. And so I'm more than excited to have Dumont on our stage to share with us her amazing talk and how we can benefit from it in our business. So Dumont, our virtual stage is all yours. Thank you. I am going to um, share something real quick before I forget. Okay, can you see this all right? This diagram? Yep. Okay, great. Um, before we even get started, um, I wanted to talk a little bit about LinkedIn and how LinkedIn differs from some of the other social networks. Um, in fact, there are people who think they should take the word social out of social network with LinkedIn because it operates quite differently than a lot of the other ones. Um, you know, I, I can see them, or I, I believe that most of us here are entrepreneurs, right? Or at least we, we think of ourselves as entrepreneurs. Now, we are entrepreneurs. Um, and, and what I want to talk to you a little bit about is how LinkedIn differs from the other social platforms. The other, you know, all social platforms are about engagement, engaging with potential clients or attracting them, you know, getting some kind of dialogue going. But it works a little bit differently on LinkedIn than it does on the other networks. And that's because um, LinkedIn is totally focused on business. It's a business orientation. LinkedIn is where small businesses go to attract, engage, and convert their ideal clients. And, and there are several reasons that I really recommend LinkedIn for, um, for entrepreneurs. And the primary one, the biggest one, is that a full 80% of leads that uh, online leads that come from social media come from LinkedIn. I mean, that's huge, 80%. And, um, you know, it's 
LinkedIn is often thought of as only dealing with B to C business to customer or business to client in actual or B to B business to business, but in actuality, it works for B to C pretty much as well. So that's a huge conversion rate or a huge attraction rate from LinkedIn. Another reason that I that I like to recommend LinkedIn to my clients, at least, is that the, the LinkedIn members are more affluent than the members on the other social media platforms, which means, you know, not only can they appreciate what you have to offer, they can afford it. So when you look at LinkedIn, you're looking at people who have a net income of right, well, the average, they say right now, is about 75000 a year which I think if you compared that to some of the other ones is quite high. Um, and it's, it's not that I would recommend LinkedIn in lieu of other social networking platforms because different platforms have different members, they appeal to different kinds of users. And so there's always room for more platforms in your, um, what do we want to call this? Your your media mix, okay? So so if you're posting something on on Facebook, it may look different than when you post it on LinkedIn, but the same information may very well appeal to users on both platforms. So so that requires a little bit of an investment of your time to get clarity about which platforms are going to work best for you. And in evaluating a platform, you know, we look at, you know, are your ideal clients hanging out there? You know, can you find them on that platform? Are they, are they, are they in particular groups on that platform? Is there a way that you can message them or direct message them that will encourage them to reach back out to you? So, so when we're talking about platforms, I want you to keep in mind that depending on who your ideal clients are, LinkedIn may or may not be your best option, but it is certainly one option particularly if your clients tend to be um, coaches, consultants, um, and other kinds of small business entities. For instance, um, some of my clients tend to come from the financial advising network or, or group or financial advisors. That's one group that kind of seeks me out. And, and they can have a lot of success on LinkedIn because the way it's constructed. Um, you can also find particular groups that you that you want to post in. So when I talk to people about LinkedIn as opposed to other social media networks, I'm not recommending LinkedIn in lieu of other networks. I'm recommending LinkedIn as part of your social media strategy. So if you know that all of your all of your um, your network tend to fall below the age of 25, LinkedIn is probably not the first place you're going to find them. You might be more likely to find them on some place like TikTok or, or even Instagram. You know, um, threads might be attracted to them because it's so new. Um, and so, so when you are looking at your network, I would like you to think about how LinkedIn fits into that network, not how it replaces that network. Um, so, so when we're talking about LinkedIn, there are, a, there are four stages that people typically go through on LinkedIn. And so what I'd like to do right now is take you through each of those stages so that you'll understand how this system works. So what I've done is develop a four-part system. I call it the lucrative LinkedIn system, you know, for, for obvious reasons, because, I, because when you use this system and you use it correctly and you use it consistently, you will be able to develop more, more clients in terms of what you're trying to do on LinkedIn. So there are three things that you need to be aware of and be totally clear on before you do before you get active on any social media platform. So these are four things that you want to keep in mind. First, 
You want to be totally clear about your goals. You know, if your goal is, if you're, let's let's say you are um, um, a physical fitness, a physical fitness planner or a personal trainer, let's say you're a personal trainer and your goal is to attract more people to your business, which just happens to be located downtown right near where a lot of the offices are. Okay, your goals on on social media and your goals in, in terms of being online are probably very different than the goals of someone who is trying to attract, you know, people from all over the world. Okay, those are very different goals. So your strategy and appealing to those people is going to be a little bit different than if your strategy was um, was something else. So for instance, if your strategy or your goal is to attract more local clients, then that's going to be, you're going to go about that differently than if your goal is to attract people from all the all over the world and get visibility among people all over the world. Now, another area that you have to be really, really clear on is your niche. And when I say your niche, I'm not saying that you have to have them so well defined that you have everything, you know, they are people who are either in financial advising or investments counseling or something like that. And they um, they, they fall between um, the ages of 25 and 40 and they um, have a lifestyle that incorporates and they, and they, and they. So you want to, on a piece of paper, just get really clear on who they are. And one of the things that I'm going to offer you today is an opportunity to do that and to do that with me for, for you know, a very, in a very reasonable way. So I just want to throw that out there so that I make sure to come back to it. Um, another thing that you have to be really clear about is your brand. And I'm talking here about your personal brand and your digital brand, which are often the same, because if you're a small business owner, your brand is very often you. You are the face of your brand. You are the person that people get to know. So when I'm doing a live stream, um, which I, I do fairly often, um, I'm not usually talking to people about how to um, how to find clients if they are in a certain area. What I am teaching them how to do is build a very clear personal brand. And a brand is defined as, you know, what you do, who you do it for, and then what I, I call it, what's the sizzle? You know, what about you is going to have someone choose you instead of someone else? So your personal brand can incorporate a lot of personal values and, and your vision and your passion and all of those things get all wrapped up into your personal brand. Now, the second piece that you really need to be clear on before you get really active on social media, whether it's LinkedIn or not, is your profile. You need to understand who you are in order to build a profile that draws people to you. So in the first area, in this clarity area, you got really clear about your goals, you know, what you're trying to do, your niche, who you're trying to do it for, and then your brand, which is which is the pizzazz, okay? That's what people know about you. In the second stage, when you're building your LinkedIn, when you're operating on LinkedIn, you want to build your profile. And your profile is going to go back to this part because your profile includes your goals, your niche, and your brand. Now, let me, let me explain that a little bit. When we talk about personal branding, we're talking about almost a funnel. You know, picture at the top of the funnel, all your values, your passions, your strengths, um, your, your personality characteristics, um, all of those kinds of things are part of your personal brand. So that when people log onto your profile on LinkedIn, they're logging on because they feel that you have something 
that will serve them. And that thing you have is your personal brand. And when you build a LinkedIn profile, that personal brand is front and center. That personal brand is actually front and center, no matter what social media you're, you're on. If you're working on Facebook, your personal brand is there. If you're working on TikTok, your personal brand is there. It's on Instagram. It's on whatever other one you want to put it on. Your brand is always there because your brand is what attracts people to you. Okay, your brand is made up of your values, your passions, your strengths, you know, all of those kinds of things. It's your niche. So what goes into that personal brand is everything that makes you attractive to that particular group of people that you want to be attractive to. And then we also talk about marketing automation. Now, that can mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. When I talk about marketing automation, I am not talking about going out and spending a small fortune on a marketing automation system where you have your bot and you can set it up and it's doing all this web crawling for you and all of that. That is not what I'm talking about because that is going to, for one thing, get very expensive. But for another thing, it doesn't do as good a job as if you had set up something that would help you with that. So there are different kinds of marketing automation. One that I often recommend to people, <clears throat> particularly if they're going to be dealing with LinkedIn, is called, um, hold on just a second, is called um, Octopus. It's O-C-T-O-P-U-S. And um, I believe it's octopus.ai. I could be wrong on that. So if I am, I will drop that. Um, for you in the chat. But Octopus is a free or relatively free, I think it may cost $300 a year, but it will literally handle all of your invitations, all of your messages. So I have 4,000 people in my, in my immediate network on LinkedIn. I can go to Octopus and I can pick pull up a segment of them and I can say, okay, I want to send these thousand people um, my latest article and a link to the worksheet. And I can do that with Octopus. I can actually have something land in their inboxes on LinkedIn that will actually invite them to either download my art. It, it will give them my article and will give them a link where they can download the worksheet that goes with it. So there are all kinds of things you can do with that. There are other kinds of marketing automation that you can use. Buffer is one that's really popular. Um, Hootsuite is popular. Um, but, but for my money, it makes more sense to go with something that will not cost you an arm and a leg. Um, and you can still get a lot of a lot of um, of um, mileage out of. Okay, so that's a little bit on automation, and we can talk a lot more about that. So don't think that we're done with automation because there's a whole lot more we can talk about. Now, the next place, I, the next thing I want to point out to you is the lead generation cycle. Now, this is going to be the same no matter what social media you're on. Okay, you are going to use this same plan. The first thing you have to do is figure out how to find them. Okay, because, um, you know, prospecting or finding your ideal clients on Facebook may look very different than finding your ideal clients on LinkedIn. You set up a different kind of search. Um, and I am not a Facebook expert, but I know the, the basics of it. So you can drill down and you can find and you can investigate and research various kinds of groups and prospects on Facebook. Now, another thing that I always want to talk about in this area is connecting, because what you want to do is connect with people in a way that will encourage them to respond to you, right? You know, 
I don't know if any of you are active on LinkedIn, but if you are, you've probably had at least 1,100 um, emails or invitations over the last year for, from people whom you have nothing in common with. You can't figure out why they're even approaching you. But if you accept their invitation, you immediately get slammed with a message that says, you know, buy this, you know, buy my this or that. And nobody likes those messages. They're premature and they and they don't, they don't get you where you want to go. So what you really want to be able to do is develop a way to nurture those people. And there are ways that you can do it on LinkedIn. There are ways that you can do it on Facebook or other, other, um, other social media platforms. I'm just not an expert on all those other ones. I can tell you a lot about LinkedIn though. And then finally, once you've gotten through that prospecting, connecting and nurturing, and let me explain that just a little bit more. Prospecting is finding the right people. Connecting with them is connecting in a way that they will respond. So you want to ask them something that they will respond to. And then nurturing is a series of emails that you send them that offer value. You know, you might send them something that says, hey, so-and-so, thanks for accepting my, my invitation to connect. You know, a lot of people find my, whatever your lead magnet is, helpful. And I wondered if you might be interested. If so, just reply yes, and I'll send you the link. And that way you've gotten their permission. It's called permission-based marketing, and it will get people to respond and, and be more involved with you. Okay. The final, the final section or final step in LinkedIn is sales and analysis. Now you're going to set up your sales actually in this first if, or you're going to set up something in this area that relates back to here. Sales analysis is looking at your, your metrics on LinkedIn. Now, LinkedIn has one place, has a couple of things that are very, very helpful. One is called the social selling index. And in a short while, I will drop a link to that for you. There's also, I'm going to offer you the opportunity to work with me um, in a way that you can go through all this, that you won't actually have to do all of that extra with it. You can, you can just lock, you can lob in or, or get into um, my area. So, um, oh my goodness, TG. Wow. Wow, I will definitely, thank you so much. I'm going to make a copy of that TG because I know I will lose it. Um, not that I usually do that, but I do it, okay? So so thank you. I'm going to put that down right here. Thank you so much. Um, anyone else, if you have anything you'd like me to address, please let me know because I will be happy to cover it. Um, now, um, I'm screen sharing right now. Um, I don't know whether it would be better at this point to stop my share and just let folks ask me questions. Um, okay, okay, good. I'm getting your, um, I'm, I'm copying this down, folks, so that I don't lose this stuff that you're sending. So just, uh, uh, okay, it's not letting me do it. Ah. Uh. Uh -oh. Cute. Um, I am going to have to, oh wait, no, here it is, hold on. I am going to put this in for everyone um, so that you'll have this link. This is, this is the link to, um, I'm going to stop sharing right now so I can, oh, there you all are. Hey, um, I'm going to stop sharing right now so that I can, um, so that I can see y'all and, and answer. Um, can y'all see me? Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's good to know. Um, 
I will be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Have I been that brilliant? Nobody has a question. Oh, wait. Yeah, I believe. Um... Oh, here we okay, go. Okay, so there's the question in the chat box. Can you see yeah, that? yeah, I think I just got it. Um, okay, so some people would like to unmute. I will just. Um... Okay, and I am going to. <clears throat> you might want to call on the name that you want to um, okay i'm answer. i'm not exactly sure how to do that so if someone can help me with that um hello i i, I can i got a, a minute so yeah, can we receive the presentation because unfortunately we are a bit late but i really oh, sure. yeah because i, I extremely we, we just had a meeting and we, we talked about exactly what you were talking about exactly okay you thing. know what <laughs> Um, I am going to have to wait, wait. Yeah. Um, the link that I just put in the chat, um, should, I hope, um, hold on. Oh, come on. But I am also, let me also put in here my email, because if you have any trouble getting in, um, this will be there for you. Yeah, and thank, thank you so much. And again, I really appreciate your work. It is what, how we call that we identify this, like just like a half an hour before I, we join as a universal sales, right? We just like, have to be aligned with the universe allied with ourselves and find the proper polarity on the other side to activate the law of attraction. So that this is exactly what you talk about. We need to have some kind of uh, a, a clarity on our mission and, and purpose uh, yeah. to activate the perfect other side. So this is perfectly aligned with our uh, vision within the company. And uh, that's why I wanted to say I, I really appreciate your work because, because uh, oh. I want to access your knowledge. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. And you know, if you if anyone has any questions, um, please just email me. Um, I am more than happy to respond. Um, and it, and just put um, I took put e i n in the subject, and I will and I will know that that's what you're right. that's what you're connecting with me about. Really, really, brilliant. Thank you so much. And and you know, if anybody um, wants wants a copy of the presentation, I'm happy to send it to you. Um, and I know that um, this is being recorded, right? So you'll be able to access it afterwards. But that should send you to the link for um, for my lucrative LinkedIn system. If for any reason it doesn't, if you can't log in or you run into any kind of a problem, please email me. You've got my email there. I will respond. Oh, thank you. Um, and you definitely will hear back from me. Um, I, I don't like it when people don't respond. So, so um, you know, one of my pet peeves. Um, so does anybody have anything in particular that you would like to talk me to talk about with LinkedIn or any particular challenges or frustrations that you encounter? I know there've got to be a few of those in there. Well, you hi, can use, hi, doctor. Uh, Sorry. There you go. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> yes. Um, so my question or my problem is that after I connect with my people on LinkedIn, um, how can I nurture that relationship? What kind of value or questions or value can I provide for them? That is such a great question. Thank you for asking that. <laughs> um, yeah, Not a problem. You know, that, that piece that you're talking about, that nurturing um, is, is exactly what I encourage you to do. So, so Leon, when you first connect with someone, um, you know how you can you can connect with them from their personal profile. Are you aware of that? 
Um, yes. Okay, so you know to go to their personal profile and, and when you hit connect, it'll give you the option of adding a note. Mm -hmm. And that is, that's the first thing I would urge you to do. Um, mm -hmm. and, and what I usually do when I, when I do that is, is I say, um, I'd love to connect with you um, and, and they can accept my connection requests. Um, after that, I would suggest that you use open-ended questions. You know, my first thing would be send them a welcome message, you know, and your welcome message should be welcoming. <laughs> um, and, and because so many of them, and I know you've had this happen to you, you get a request for a connection. They say something like, hey, Leon, I was just looking at your profile. I think we'd be great connections, you know, and then the next you accept their, their invitation. And before you can even write them back, you get a sales, a sales, mm -hmm. you know, yes. message. And that All is the... such a turnoff, isn't it? I mean, that mm -hmm. is just such a turnoff. So what I encourage you to do is write them a welcome, a welcome message and put in that message, you know, a lot of people like my, and it can be, you know, something that you have that you offer to people you know it could be you know like what i'm uh, what i'm showing you right here it could just be a graphic you know or or something like that it could be a worksheet or an ebook you know anything that would you know contribute value but what you want to do each time you do that is you want to follow up so Leon, let's say you just connected with me and I write back and say, oh, Leon, I'm so glad you connected with me. You know, the next thing you do is not going to be, hey, Dumont, glad we connected. Would you like to buy my, you know, yeah. um, instead, what I would encourage you to do is say a lot of people find my um, my ebook on, you know, how to how to train your dog to speak in three easy lessons. And, and so you would ask them, you know, hey, I have this, this ebook that a lot of people who own dogs find really helpful. Would you like a copy or would you like, you know, to, to have a copy of it? And then they can write you back and then you send them the opt-in link. Or you can say no opt-in required. And you can just, if they say yes, they want it, you can actually go and just send them the opt-in link in their email. So there are lots of different ways you can do it, but what I would encourage you to do is each time you send them something, follow up on that. So today you send them the link to your ebook and the accompanying worksheet, okay? Mm -hmm. In three mm -hmm. days, you go back and say, hey, how'd you like such and such? Or did you, or, or I could say, Leon, did you opt into my free such and such? You know, do you have any questions or did you opt in for the free roadmap? Did that, you know, do you have any questions regarding that? So that each time you do something, you're taking them one step further down your sales mm -hmm. funnel. You know, and you could mm -hmm. also include in that things like, you know, if you have an app, you know, you could say you can download my app or you can, you know, opt into this. What you want to do each time is make sure, and I would keep this on like a spreadsheet so you just know when the next time is or hire a really good VA who will do it all for you. Um, but, you know, I would have a spreadsheet that says, you know, okay, I sent the invitation on this. I'm going to follow up on this date, you know, so that you have each one and you're tracking them. Mm -hmm. um, now, I don't know what your what your sales process looks like, so I can't give you, you know, a specific sales process to follow. But if you if you want to connect with me, we can definitely talk about that and we can go through that, you know, bit by bit, because what mm -hmm. I like to do is take people through, um, you know, the steps, you know, here's where you'd want to start. And then these are the steps that you're going to want to take. And the steps that might be good for you may be absolutely wrong for someone else. So it's very much a part, it's very much uh, um, related to, or it's very much about personalization. Um, because the more personalized you can make it, the more people are likely to want what you're selling. Mm -hmm. So I have a newsletter on LinkedIn. All right. But, 
Would that be a good first? It's yes. And, um, and Leon, let me give you a little bit of a hint about that because um, it had, because I've, I've, I ran into something that I didn't realize. Um, I was sending out invitations to people to participate in some research interviews I'm doing on a course that I'm creating on LinkedIn. And so I sent out invitations to people, you know, to, to connect with them and then to, to look at this. And what I found was that some people really like that, um, but other mm -hmm. people don't, you know. So you want to mm -hmm. make sure that um, when you're doing that, that you actually have your process set up, mm -hmm. okay? Um, and, and what works for you really well, Leon, may not work for someone else. It may not work well for Ralph or for George or for, you know, Destiny, but it'll work for you. And that's what you really want to know is what works for you. Okay. Does that help? Yes, thank you. Okay, great. Thank you, though. Mm -hmm. We have Daniel raised his hand. Okay, Daniel. There we go. I can I can see you. I can't. I'm, I don't. I think you have to unmute yourself, Daniel. There yes. Hi. Okay. Yeah. There we go. Uh, hi. Uh, actually, I put something in the chat. Was curious what you uh, what your thinking would be. Uh, okay. Uh, when someone connects with me, uh, you'll see it in the chat. Um, that's sometimes a typical message I send. And also, I should probably explain to you something. Uh, okay. We have a unique technology where we can integrate uh, LinkedIn profile information of a viewer into the video in real time. Uh, yeah. we, have a, we have a special agreement with LinkedIn. And it's funny because you were talking about personalization. Yeah. And uh, we can actually get name, email address, location, and image. And, yeah, and uh, I'm looking at this, Daniel, and I think I've seen you before. I think I've seen your stuff before. Oh, uh, you may have, as a matter of fact. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, let me definitely, hold on. I'm going to. In fact, uh, you can click on that link um, and you'll have to connect with uh, LinkedIn or Facebook. Uh, I guess since we're talking about LinkedIn, you can connect with LinkedIn and you log into LinkedIn like you normally do. And the only thing that is us is you give permission for our player and you'll okay. actually see your name and image uh, in the video. And also it will be spoken because we have, uh, dynamic voice technology as well. And it's kind of a cute video that, well, you'll see what it does. I don't want to give it away in case other people want to try yeah, it. I'm having trouble. Um, I can't seem to access it. Yeah, I'm not seeing it, but what I'm going to do, Daniel, is I'm going to um, copy this so I can if it'll let me, it doesn't want to let me. Oh, wait, there we go, I think. Let me see if I can. Okay, I just, what I've done is I, I went, okay, I went to your link, so I'll be able to, I'll be able yeah. to go back to it. Oh, okay, so, yeah, the, the link uh, that people usually will access right away is the thanks for connecting. And yeah. um, and the the process to log into either Facebook or LinkedIn is totally their process. We have nothing to do with that part. It, okay. It's that part. It's because we're trying to be GDPR compliant. It has to do, which is one of the main reasons we got the access from both uh, Microsoft and Meta. Okay. Uh, uh, which was pretty amazing when you think about it. Yeah. It's a whole, whole story in itself. Um, and then um, I I sort of give them the option, like after I say no regards, my name, blah blah blah. I basically, you know, underneath put our link directory and, our, and the meeting link. And I guess I, I threw in our AR biz card since it's something that's pretty unusual, even though it's actually in the link directory. Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not, not able to access it for some reason. Let me go in. Ah, no. Oh, wait. There it is, if I can get back to it. Yeah, in fact, uh, let's see. Oh, it's over the other way. Well, I'm just going to copy it all and
Okay, I've got it. I copied it down, so we're okay. okay. Um, so Daniel, yeah, I will definitely look into that. I think I've seen your stuff before. Probably. Um, yeah. Well, no, I'm 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 really excited about talking to you because I think that that's a really great um, great option, and I would encourage other people to look at it too. So when someone does something on LinkedIn, then we can then load it into the video or, or the view. Yeah. View, um, view. Yeah. Their information. Um, once they give their permission and all, um, we're going to actually integrate their name, email address, location, and image into the video in real time. And that can be, um, that. you know, spoken inside the video as well as shown. And wow. also what's cool is we have a lead capture form that we can put in the video. Yeah. Uh, and the lead capture form is naturally automatically filled in. So oh, they would see their terrific. name and email address is already there. And all they wow. have to do is click submit. And wow. uh, it's funny because, yeah, and, and actually you would love this since you're a LinkedIn consultant because I met with another one uh, last week and he was telling me uh, he was spending an ungodly amount of money doing campaigns. And all he's trying to do is get names and emails, and we get that for free with our system. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> and he was like, "You're going to save me thousands a month." I was like, yeah, "Where?" Yes. <laughs> but wow. um, but I, but I, I thought it was kind of neat. Uh, we do a lot of different things. Uh, we're into auto augmented reality, virtual reality, and uh, interactive multimedia, all, all sorts of different things. But um, oh. I thought that I was hoping it was kind of a neat reply because uh, you know we thank them for connecting. And plus, in a sense, as part of that, they get a demo of one of our technologies right away. That's that's nice. And then, uh, you know, I'm not trying to be salesy no, about I'm... it, but then I include you know, some of our links, you know, sort of below the fold, as as I say, um, that, you know, if they want to explore further, they can. Yeah. And, you know, I definitely, whoops, cancel. Um, I definitely will um, will check that out, Daniel, because that's that's terrific. I can't wait to check it out. So um, let me still, because we have some time, let me see um, what other questions people might have. Sure. I believe oh, uh, I Yuri. So uh, pardon? Sorry. I believe oh, I Yuri said... raised her hand earlier. I noticed. I didn't. I didn't. No, so. sorry. I was actually messing with my um my video cam <laughs> AI tool. Yeah, sorry about that. That's that's, that's okay. That's okay. Um, well, I must have been so good that people are just speechless. They don't know what to say. <laughs> actually, um, the the one thing if you take nothing else away with you right now. What I'd like you to remember is that what, what works on social media, I don't care which platform it is that you're on, is promoting your brand. And, and your brand is really about who you are, who you help, and how you help them. So when you think of your brand, think about what makes you stand out from other people who have similar services. You know, there are a lot of people out there who can talk about LinkedIn. I mean, you know, there, there are people practically standing on street corners saying, you know, hey, I can talk about LinkedIn um, or personal branding or any of those things. But what I want you to keep in mind is that your brand is, is what people learn to like about you and it's why they'll buy from you. When we talk about branding, one of the things that we talk about is what makes a powerful brand. And a lot of people think a brand is about, you know, your tag or your colors or, you know, your, your headline or something like that. And that really isn't what your brand is. Your brand is what people, I love this definition. It's what people say about you after you leave the room. I love that definition because it's so accurate. You know, have you ever been, you know, someplace where, you know, there was one person who walked in and immediately everybody kind of noticed, you know, they, they took note of this person, they kind of commanded everyone's attention. Um, you know, that's somebody who has a powerful brand because they, people notice them. These people stand out when they walk into a room. Now, what makes your brand 
really powerful is is what makes you different because people don't buy from you i know this is kind of surprising to some people but they don't buy from you because you're the best at what you do you know there are for instance on linkedin there are over 950 million people there's there is a possibility that someone is in there who does it just as well as you do. You know, I'm not saying they are, but there may be somebody out there who knows just as much about how to build a powerful personal brand as I do. So, so when we talk about branding, we're not talking about making you the best in all the world, because you know what? People don't buy from you because you're the best. They buy from you because you're different, but they buy from you because you're different and you're their kind of different, okay? When, when we put our brand out there, we're telling people who we are, who we help, and how we help them. So, you know, someone who wants to work with a LinkedIn expert might want to work with me. You know, they might like my brand. Uh, people who like to work with me always say that I have kind of a weird sense of humor. Either that or I have a very dry sense of humor, or some people think I have a highly evolved sense of humor, but those, there aren't that many of those people out there. Um, so, so when you talk about your brand, you are talking about those elements that make you different. So, you know, someone might want to work with a LinkedIn expert, and that may mean they want to work with me. It may not mean they want to work with me. There may be somebody who matches them a little bit better, who speaks to their area of interest better. Um, maybe it's someone who um, is, is more, um, more knowledgeable about partic a particular social media platform that I don't know. Maybe it's someone who just wants to understand how to how to how to how to set up their social media network. In other words, what are they going to do? What is their social media plan? And some people want to work with me just for that. Some people want to work with me because I'm a LinkedIn expert and they know their their clients are on LinkedIn. So they want to work with me because they know that I can help them do what they want to do. But whether somebody wants to work with you or not very often has nothing to do with how good you are at something. It also has to do with your personal brand. You know, someone might want to work with me um, because they like a weird sense of humor, or they might work with me because they see me as someone that, you know, that they can talk with, someone who they can relate to. So there are all kinds of what reasons that people will want to work with you, but they almost always relate to your brand. So that's what I would want you to, to remember, you know, when you're walking away from this is that, or when you're leaving this, is that people really want to know what your brand is. And um, I am copying the link here so that um, I can hopefully get everybody's, I wonder if there's a way that I can just link to everybody in the chat. Don't know if there is. Well, I'm going to try it. But anyway, I do have um because I if I can't if if I can't download all these links, can can you send me those links if I need them? Um the links of the guests. Uh, yes. the okay, I will take down if you click the three dots at the bottom the of bottom. your chat. Oh yeah. Okay. You can Thank save you. the whole trend transcript okay okay great thank you that is what i wanted thank you it's three little dots at the bottom of the chat and window says, and it says save here save save chat and, okay great great okay so that will that's great i can do that all right um Anybody else have any questions I can answer for you? I believe there were questions in the chat, like um, the questions 
from Bonnie Nichols. Uh, let's see. Let me go back up here. Daniel Allen. I'm looking up here. Daniel. Leon. Yuri. Three new messages, maybe. Um, I can't um tell them for you. I can read them for you. Do you want me to? Um I think that's gonna be a little difficult. Okay. I think if I just save the chat, it should okay. be okay. Um otherwise, can I um see I don't know any way that I can do that other than saving it, which I have. So hopefully that works. Um, hey, I can hear if that's all right. I'm, yeah, I can hear you. Hi. Um, oh, you know what? I'm going to take a screenshot of the, of the, here we go. Okay. I was curious, as a general rule, do you recommend a business having a LinkedIn page in addition to the business development person of that business who does a lot of the B2B connections, should a, should a business have a page as a general rule or not necessarily? Um, I'm not sure I understood your question. Um, should, is it that, should you have um, a, a business page or a company page also? Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would recommend that you do, um, and here's why. LinkedIn used to it used to not be any big shake to have a LinkedIn company page. You know, I, I think I have like seven or eight myself. Um, but what you want to do is you want to have a page that is for your company. So you know how on LinkedIn you can go and you can and you can you can scroll down and you can create a company page. I would do that for a couple of reasons. One is that you can invite followers to your company page. So it's just another way to get people following you. Another one, though, is that you can, from your profile, post things to your company page so that anything that's on your profile is also on that company page. What that does is it attracts more people to your profile. OK, so, yes, I would suggest that you have a company page. There are some really cool things you can do with it. For instance, you can showcase particular particular products or services that you have so that people can opt into those. You can share from your profile. You can share posts. Um, you can post things directly to your company page. Um, and you can also invite followers. And that may not sound like a big deal. But once you get into it a little bit, it can really it can really make a big difference. OK, um, and I'm seeing some other people have raised their hands. If I click on that, can I um, I see Yuri here. Can I ask Yuri to unmute? Are... I, be I believe it, it is S. Ladva who raised. Yeah. Oh, OK, mm -hmm. OK, good. OK, yeah. so. Oh. Uh, thanks, uh, Dr. Owen. A think... quick question. Okay, can you have yeah. multiple? Can you hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. Can you have multiple business accounts on LinkedIn? Um, well, the short answer is yes. Um, but, but I wouldn't advise it, and here's why. Um, it's, it's easy for people to get confused on LinkedIn. Now, if you have, and I, I don't have any way of knowing, do you have more than one company or more than one business? Yes. Okay. Yeah. So it's yes. two separate, completely different. Okay. So, so you can create different company pages for each of them. You know, for instance, I have one for Radically Rewarding Careers was an earlier business that I had. I have one for Dumont and Associates, and I have one for Dumont Digital Marketing. Each of those are separate LinkedIn pages, um, and I can invite followers to each one of those, and we post to them at times. 
but you tend to attract different people with different kinds of company pages. Um, so what I would suggest to you is that, yes, you can have multiple company pages. I would just make sure that in your experience section on your profile that you, you know, put a link to each of those company pages. You can do it with your with the logo. You can just put the logo next to that experience and when people click on it, it will take them to your company page. Um, because if you have more than one company page, you want people to be able to access those different services. Now you could mention in your about section that you serve people in those different groups and then you could link to those in your experience section. But that might not even be necessary because you have it in your experience section. Yeah, but so you always have to have your personal profile and then you link the two Right, businesses. you can link it to different companies. Okay, but what if I want to just have completely separate? So it's not something that would come on as one of your companies, it would be somebody else's? No, it is my company. Okay. okay? But uh, there, so one is... Uh, what is it? Uh, um, one's a psychology uh, company, okay? okay? And another one is uh, oral care, has completely two totally different. Very different, yeah. Okay. And I really don't care whether the, the, the clients, you know, see one or the other. I'd rather okay. not. Okay. And so at the end of the day, it's still me. Right. Right. So one's product based, one's service based. Right, right. So, so you could have, well, you could do a couple of things there. One is you could have a company page and then you could have a spotlight on that particular service or that particular product. Um, and you could, you could do that fairly simply. Um, or you can have, now, now are both of those products housed as part of the same company or are they separate? No, two completely different. They're two completely different ones. Okay, yes. so I would have them listed as two completely different companies. And with one, I would spotlight the product. And with the other, I would spotlight service. Okay, so do I have to initiate that in the sense that it's my profile and then from my profile, I have two different companies or can I when just create you, two separate companies? When you log on to LinkedIn, you know how you'll see in the in the upper menu, there'll be a picture of you. Yep. Okay, if you click on that, there's a drop down menu and it will give you the opportunity to create a company page. Okay, so I can do multiple from right there. You can, yeah, you can do multiples from right there. And, and what I would be careful of, though, is that you have those on your profile too, so that people can access both. Okay, all right, awesome. Thanks, Doc. You're welcome. Hi, yeah. doctor. Yeah. Um, I have another question, but I'm not too sure if you may be able to help me with this one. Okay. Um, are you familiar with the LinkedIn algorithm and how can you crack it? Um, how can you reach more people? Or um, is it involves the hashtag? Is, is it yeah. involved well, using partially. hashtags, for example? Partially. Mm -hmm. um, and, and Leon, that's a very good question because I think that's something that a lot of people are interested in. Um, when you are creating content, now are you, talk, are you talking about inviting people through content or are you talking about getting better engagement with content? Better engagement. So. Better engagement, okay. Yes. So, so here, here are a couple of things you can do. One is... Um, if you are, now are you talking about um, inviting people to connect and then um, when a welcoming message up, asking of them if they would like, you know, a free gift mm -hmm. of some kind? Okay. Correct. So that That's free the... gift. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what I would do with them is a week later, follow mm -hmm. up with a message that says, hey, did you, you know, did you, did you get my free ebook? You know, I'm following up. Did you have any questions or did you get my free such and such? Um, how did that go for you? You know, and just get them involved. And you can also say, love to hear any questions you have. 
you know, so that you can follow up with them and say, you know, a lot of people or, you know, a, a lot of people who use this, that my ebook or who subscribe or who order my ebook have a question about, you know, how to do such and such. Do you have that question or can I answer something for you? And that's how I would start doing it. Mm -hmm. Now you can mm -hmm. always, and, and here's the thing, here's the thing that I like to remind people about. There's no, there's no shame in moving on. Okay. Mm -hmm. In other words, you know, you don't need to approach everyone in your network every day, right? You're going to have kind of a rolling, you know, um, system there. So perhaps you offer them a link to download your free ebook, you know, and, mm -hmm. and it has a worksheet that goes with it. And so mm -hmm. the next week you could follow up and say, oh, did you get a chance to out download this? Do you have any questions? Or one thing I, you know, one thing I get a lot when people download my, or one question I get a lot is how to do such and such, you know, mm -hmm. would you like, you know, would you like to know that or something like that where you're following up and asking mm -hmm. them for a response? Because when you do that, um, you are giving them that opportunity, but you're not hammering them. Okay? Correct. That's, that's what we want to avoid, is we want to avoid mm -hmm. hammering them. So, so mm -hmm. Leon, you could have a system where, you know, particularly if you were using something like Octopus, where you would invite them to connect, but then the next time you, you, you sent them something, it would be, you know, hey, a lot of people that, that I connect with like to like my you know four part series on you know and you could offer mm -hmm. them that and then get get responses so that's probably how i would approach it and and mm -hmm. what i would do if if i were in your shoes is i would have kind of a um a cheat sheet you know mm -hmm. where you can say where and and what i what i tell my clients to do is to make it make it quicker by creating mm -hmm. you know, just a document where mm -hmm. you have, you know, like maybe three different versions of invitations, mm -hmm. you know, and three different welcome mm -hmm. messages. And one of those might say, hey, thank you for accepting mm -hmm. my connection requests. You know, a lot of people like my such and such. I'm wondering mm -hmm. if you would like a copy. If so, just respond yes, and I'll get it right to you, you know, mm -hmm. so that you're always asking them for a response. Mm -hmm. And there's one thing, there's one thing to keep in mind here. Um, there's no shame in moving on. You know, like if you've connected with somebody and they didn't respond, um, you know, put them on a waiting list and go back in, you know, a couple mm -hmm. of months and approach them again. You're not going to wear out your welcome that way. Mm -hmm. You know, I think what people get tired of is that constant buy my stuff you know, that, mm -hmm. that get inundated with. And, you know, if there's one thing I would, I would love for everyone to remember, it's that nobody likes those emails. You know, nobody mm -hmm. wants to be constantly reminded that, you know, oh, buy this, or, oh, do you want this? Or mm -hmm. we get tired of that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so what I would suggest is, you know, keeping, you know, maybe even just an open document where you can copy a welcome message really quickly that says, hey, you know, mm -hmm. would you like to, would you like a copy of this? And you can follow mm -hmm. up with that. Um, okay, that's, that's a good way. Okay, because I think yeah. people get tired of it. You know, it's breaking, it. yeah. breaking yeah. the ice too. Yes, exactly. Yes. And and once you've done that, Leon, then they've got this impression of you as someone that provides value, that isn't pushy, that encourages open conversation. And that's what you want. Because it's not, it's not messages that get someone to buy from you. It's getting that conversation going. When you develop that dialogue, that's when that's when they're going to respond to you. And if you've had, you know, a couple of back and forth, you know, like you've talked with them a couple of times, or you've sent them and they've replied to something, that's your end. That's when you send them the message that says, hey, you know, we've we've got a good, pretty good conversation going here. Would you like to hop on a call? Mm -hmm. You know, so we can we can explore it further. That's when you want to do that. 
Mm. Does that make sense? Yes. Thank you for your input. I mean, for your insights. You're that's, welcome. That's great. You're welcome. And don't Thanks. don't hesitate to contact me. Okay. Okay, doctor. Yeah. I do answer my emails. <laughs> <laughs> so so that's that's always something that I look towards. So. Um, Oh, okay. So can I answer any other questions for anyone? I'm happy to do so if I can. Well, since, since we have a little bit of a lag here for a minute, why don't I talk about personal branding? Because a lot of people don't understand what a personal brand is. And your personal brand is really what makes you unique, you know, and what makes you valuable and what makes you someone that they would want to interact with. And your brand is all about what makes you different. Okay, for instance, my brand, when people, when people um, invite me to connect or people get involved with my brand, they usually mention a couple of things. One is my sense of humor. And some people say it's very dry. Other people say it's highly evolved. And some people say it's just plain weird. So, so you can take your pick. Um, but, but when people want to work with you. They want to work with you because of who you are and something about you that's a personal characteristic that appeals to them. Okay, so so be having a big, bold, badass brand, which is what I urge people to do, means really stepping into all of who you are. You know, stepping into all of those wonderful things that are part of your brand, you know, your personality characteristics, your values, your strengths, um, those things that make you different from other people that may offer the same thing, but they do it in a little bit different way, in a little bit different way. For instance, you know, if I were going to interact with Daniel right now, you can bet I'd be looking at you know, view3d.tv, right? I'd be going right there because he's he's given me that as a brand. When you're talking about your brand, you are really talking about value. And when you're talking about value, you're talking about relevance. Because when you think about it, something's only valuable to you if it's something you want, right? If it has nothing to do with you, if it has nothing to do with your challenges and your problems and your goals and your frustrations, who cares? You know, it doesn't matter to you because, hey, that's not that's not what you, you're looking for. So, so when people gravitate towards your brand, that means they have found something about you that either makes you a better match for them or makes you more valuable to them in some way. It may be, you know, some services that you provide. It may be, you know, your free gift. Maybe something that you have available on your profile is something that they want. You know, on my profile, I have something that links to my app, um, you know, where people can download my app. Hopefully, if it ever, you know, it, you can download it from the Google store right now and you can download it from the Apple store, but you can't download it from both together. So, so they aren't quite both working yet. But, but what you can do always is you can always email and you can always find me on LinkedIn. You know, if, if you want to connect me with me on LinkedIn, just go to my profile and put connect. And just put a little note in there that says EIN. That's all I need to see, and I will accept it. And we'll start a nice conversation. Sure will. Thank you so much, Dr. Duman. Well, if there is uh, no other questions that uh, will be raised, we can go on our takeaways and gratitude circle. So good to me. I. I actually oh, do have a go. question. Okay. Uh, Great. Uh, hi, doctor. Sorry, my name is Zoheb. I actually joined in late, so I'm not sure if we discussed this already. But That's I okay. basically pro 
uh, I basically provide IT consultancy services. And um, maybe we discussed this question, but uh, I wanted to, uh, I was curious about how to get the conversation from, hello, thank you for connecting with me to what your problems are. Because once I know the problems, you know, then, we, then I can cater my solution and uh, you know, put myself forward as that, uh, you know, as a solution provider for their specific problem. Okay, so let me let me see if I'm clear on this. Your your question re revolves around um, how to have people contact you, or I'm not I'm, help me with so, this. I'm so, a little unclear. No, no problem. So uh, usually when I whenever I connect with people over LinkedIn, uh, any potential client, I send them the connection, and then once yeah. they connect, I send them thank you for connecting sort mm -hmm. of email. But then from there on, how do I, you know, how do I take that conversation from that oh, point to oh. knowing what their problems are exactly? Okay. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's great. That's a good question. Um, yes. Um, there, you, what you want to do, and Leon um, was, was asking about this earlier. I think it was a really good, a really good um place to kind of a jumping off point because um, when you are interacting with people on LinkedIn, what you want to do is create a conversation with them. Okay. You want to have a conversation with them on LinkedIn, just like, you know, we're talking right now. So on LinkedIn, when you invite someone to connect and they accept that's a great opportunity to send them a message that offers some value, a reason to connect back with you. So for instance, let's say you just connected with me and I accepted your connection. Um, and so the next thing you sent me might, might be um, uh, something that would say, hey, Dumont, um, I created this ebook about how to do something, whatever whatever that is. And, and would you like a copy of it? And I'd write back and say, yeah, I'd like a copy. Or you could just say, you know, reply and say yes, if you'd like a copy. And then now you have my permission to, to market to me, okay? So at that point, you can write back and say, here's the link to opt into my free, ebook or my free gift of some kind. So that's one way to do it is, you know, to get people to respond that way. Um, another way would be to just follow up occasionally and show interest in what they're doing. You can do this in a couple of different ways. One way that works really well is to go to your news feed on LinkedIn and on any, any, article or post that you see in that news feed, they'll have three little dots next to it. And if you click on those dots, there's something that says improve my feed. And what that will do is it will train your news feed to show more people that are doing those particular things. Now, another way that you can do that, um, particularly if you're following certain people that you might want to approach as potential clients, you can go to their profile. On their profile, they're going to have a bell. And if you click that bell and turn it gray, if you, if you turn the bell gray, what that means is you will now be notified every time they post something. So when you log mm -hmm. on to LinkedIn, you know how you see in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see... Um, a little circle that has all these numbers around it. It'll have like invitation or network and it'll have messages and it'll have all those different things. You can mm -hmm. click on those. For instance, you can click on notifications and it will show you everyone that you're following who has posted something. So you can click on that. It will take you to what they just posted so that you can comment on it. Now, when you think about this, say that... Um, um, I just posted something and you saw it in the in the news feed and you click on that and you respond to it. You like it and you put something on there that says, hey, Dumont, this was this was a great idea. I really appreciated this. You know, where can I learn more? And then I could respond to you and say, you know, you can learn more here. 
you know, and, and this is how you would do it. And, and people notice that, you know, if you are, are, if you have a client or you have someone on LinkedIn that you see that you would really, you really think would make a great connection request for you, go to their profile and click on that bell. Because every time they post something, you can see it. And then you can go in and like it and comment on it. And that's where the value is. Because liking it doesn't do a whole lot. Um, but when you comment on LinkedIn, that person will get a notice that you commented on it. And that is so valuable. And if you comment on it, and then you you know, if you really want to get gold, if you really want them to just love you, just love you, you know, mm -hmm. um, go to their, go to their, their, um, their feed and, or go to their profile and click that bell because every time they post something now, you know it. So if I want, if, if I see Leon and I go, oh, Leon would be a great contact for me. You know, I, I really want to talk with him and I want to invite him to my company page. I could do that in a direct mail, in a direct request. So every, if you, if you click on somebody's bell, every time they post something, you're going to be notified. And that means you can go in and comment on it and even repost them. And that's where the real value is for them. Because now their post is going to be seen by everyone in your network. You just did them a huge favor. Does that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you so much. You're welcome. So what what you don't want to do is make is is to have them think you're stalking them. Okay, oh, yeah. so, <laughs> so so don't <laughs> sure. don't overdo it is what I would say. Well, this has been very very interesting and and it's been so helpful. And I just want to thank all of you. For participating in this because it has this has really been terrific for me and and i really appreciate it now um is this is are these housed on youtube someplace yes after the call uh, there will be a replay that will be posted on youtube and um the members will also receive uh, an email containing the link to the replay button along with your um uh your offer earlier okay. or the offer link so that they can also click on that as well okay so thank Great. you and, so much and if anybody has any further questions um because i can't answer every question yeah. i know so if there are any further questions please email me or connect with me on linkedin i will be so happy to answer any of those for you perfect and um uh, so they can reach you at um, your email at mm -hmm. Dumont, right? Dumont. Dumont. Yeah, I can type it in if you want. Okay, perfect. I can also, yeah, that would be great. And you may want to include your LinkedIn as well. Oh, I don't know if I have that handy. I may not be able to do that. No problem. Your email would be already great. And yeah, while think, you are I doing think, that, okay. There we go. Wait, okay. no. Oh, I, I see what I did. Hold on. Everyone. Okay, now we'll do it. There we go. Okay. Hey, um, thank you so much, Duan. So while, um, um, since we are now in our uh, gratitude circle, I just like to read some comments that we have received from um, the guest for today Ready? so um, yeah um, like what Ron had said just want to say that this is the best presentation on LinkedIn and I have attended several over the oh, years thank you wow that makes me so happy <laughs> TG had said blessing thank you and um, 
And Laureen said, thank you for this great information. It has been a pleasure. So if anybody else who would like to share, okay, Zuhi had said, uh, thank you. This was great. Please let me know where I can find the full video recording. We will send you the link to your email after the call. And if anybody else would like to share their takeaways, what they've learned from today's event and their gratitude to our speaker, please feel free to raise your hand or unmute yourself. We would love to hear them. Okay, can I uh, chime in? Of course. Okay, so first of all, uh, thank you, Dr. Owen. Um, this, was, this was uh, very helpful because I've been told that uh, uh, I couldn't have two separate accounts and LinkedIn could create problems for me, so. Um, for that could happen, yeah. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> but but here's here's what I want you to do: um, email me or connect with me on LinkedIn, and and we'll work that out. Okay. Uh, okay, awesome. And uh, thank you for your time. Oh, you're um, very and, welcome. And I did uh, uh, link with link uh, with you on LinkedIn, right? Because I just posted uh, a note to you, so hopefully we Great. can connect. Yeah? Thank you. I, thank I appreciate you. it. Thanks. Oh, listen, this has been just, this has been my pleasure. Yes, so I just want to say thank you, Dr. Owens. And also thank you, Kaziah, for setting this up. There's a lot of valuable information that I found very useful, and I learned a lot of new and exciting things today. So thank you so much for that. Oh, you're very welcome. And Leon, you ask great questions. Thank you. You know, that's that so true. You really do, and that's that valuable. Okay. Just wanted wanted to make sure that I that I cleared all my demons. So I so I asked all <laughs> <Thank you>. just... <laughs> Okay. Um, well, yeah, we'll 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 try and keep you away from those demons if possible. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. I wanted Ms. to say, um, one thing. So I noticed at the beginning, you basically went over like how to make a very good brand, which was nice because I, I was able to understand a little bit more about um, is in each like section of a good brand. Mm -hmm. And then another thing was to uh, when you went over uh, nurturing your audience, I thought that was really nice and to always follow up and keep track of what you do. Thank you, Destiny. That was that was great feedback. I really appreciate you guys have given me such great feedback, and you have no idea how much I appreciate that. Um, you know, we go out and pay good money to get stuff like this. That is why we're so privileged, Dr. Owen, to hear you at our platform as you've shared so much valuable information. Well, you're very, very welcome. And I want to thank everyone because you have made this a great experience. And that is true for me as well. And now thank you so much, everyone, for showing up at today's yeah. event. And thank you so much, Dr. Owen, for your time and for your valuable knowledge that you've shared with us. So our next event is going to be on uh, July 25th, and uh, we are going to have some Sam Libowitz talking about podcast success stories. So to sign up for that, uh, you can go to uh, this URL that I will put in the chat box. And Sam is great. Yes, you've met him as well. Oh, he's, yeah, he's one of my favorite people. All right, that's the link. And um, once more, thank you so much, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Owen. We will see you on our next event. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.